Welcome back to another episode of these crazy fools that just eat meat and can't stop talking about it. We got our buddy Joe Zumbo back from down under. And of course, uh, Justin, alloutlife.carnivore, phoning it in from the deep Midwest mm-hmm. slash almost south, right? Uh, Well, more north east now, I guess. Oh, okay. That's right. You just moved. So. Uh-huh. So when we're setting this up, Joe uh, had a little bit of a crisis because a police chase started. <laughs> and he's like, damn it, why has it got to be a police chase while we're about to record? So uh, what's going on with that police chase? What's going on? He said it was in Lakewood. Yeah, so it looks like the idiot doesn't know how to drive. Um, mm. He's had a, he's had a traffic collision. Yeah. He's got, gotten out and he's he's injured and he's trying to break into a home. Nice, yeah. So, so that's the that's the latest update. That's a good way to get shot in LA. (laughs) Try to break into someone's home. (laughs) Yeah, cops chasing you and you rush into somebody's house. You're probably gonna get shot or brained with a chair or something. I'm guessing. (laughs) So, so actually, actually, on 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 the subject of chases, right? You guys are from LA, Mm. okay? So I have a quick. Yeah, so I have a question for you. Every time I watch a pursuit, they're doing 90, 100 miles an hour on the freeways. Why is it when I was over there, we were lucky to do 20 miles an hour on the freeway? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> and there was always traffic, always traffic. Were we on the wrong freeways? No, it's just like it's a thing of synchronicity because you can't really have a high-speed chase when there is traffic. So they basically have to take place in places where they're is no traffic at that moment. Right, but every freeway we went on that we went on, there was always traffic. Yeah, remember that was it in the morning when we were driving back from LA to my place and it there was no traffic that one time we drove all the way from I don't know the hotel or something at the night after the concert. You remember that? And we drove and we were like Oh, oh yeah, it was a good it was oh, that yeah. was a really good run. Yeah. Yeah. And so then there was that's yeah, when and then we dropped Justin cities. off. Yeah, but then we dropped Justin off, and then we decided to go to Huntington Beach. Mm. And on the way back, it was at a walking pace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know how many miles. There's many, 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 many miles. It was yeah. very, very slow. <laughs> and wasn't that <laughs> like you were dying to get home because you you were in the middle of like a refi? Cri- another a, a, another crisis with Qantas. Oh, it was Qantas, sa- that's right. The Qantas, the safest airline in the world with the shittest customer service. <laughs> instead of refunding my points, well, actually, yeah, instead oh, of refunding my, my You're stuck in traffic because... and your phone died, and we didn't, I didn't have an iPhone charger because I'm an Android yeah. guy. So and you're like... one time I didn't charge my phone. Your phone was one dying, time. yeah. yeah so, so I spent one hour on the phone with Qantas telling them that they've made a mistake and they need to refund me my points because they've du- double-charged me. They refunded the points and cancelled my ticket. <laughs> so, <laughs> the joys yeah, of so traveling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they were telling me it was the, the flight was fully booked. Anyway, it was a mess, an absolute mess. You were a little bit on edge during that car ride home. Uh, on edge? <laughs> is that what you want to call it? <laughs> yeah. this is, I think my stress levels were through the roof. <laughs> Ah, the joys of traffic and travel. The stories of planes, trains, and automobiles. (laughs) So, uh, let's see. uh, So, Joe lives all the way in Sydney, Australia. Sunny Sydney. Got it right. Sunny Sydney. Sydney. And they don't have police chases down there, but we have an abundance of them here in L.A. So... Mm -hmm. Joe usually notifies me of police chases before I ever hear of them. He's like, oh, is, I see my phone pings and it's Joe. And it's like, you know, uh, 19 police cars chasing somebody down the 405 or the 91 or the 15 or the 10 or the 60 or the 605 or the 40. Well, there was one by the 60 yesterday in Ontario. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And the, the guy the guy was, uh, was didn't want to get out of the car until they bought the bear cat. And mm. then it sort of then it sort of calmed the mood down. 
Well, you remember you sent me that link to the one and started in Corona, uh, like two weeks ago or something like that. They were on the freeway. Oh. Corona PD was chasing uh, somebody down the freeway. And then uh, they went from probably the 15 to the 91. And uh, I left work late and I got on the freeway and it was jammed up bad. And then I noticed that that, uh, yes. that chase was on the other side of the freeway from where I was. There was more police on the other side of the freeway than I'd ever seen in one place. There was there was nothing but lights on the other side of the freeway for like a quarter mile in either direction. It's like, oh, damn uh, that was that was the hang on, wasn't that the guy that was what that was shooting at, back at the police? Yeah, that was not the first one. The one there's one that happened before you came, remember, and we drove past it and then there was another one just like two weeks ago. And yeah, he was shooting. He had a rifle or something he's, shooting out the yeah. window at the cops. He stopped on the freeway, stopped on the freeway, puts his, you know, sticks his body out the car and just starts firing at the police, at Corona PD. Yeah. And that yeah. ended up, that, that, that was in near Anaheim, I think, where it, it where was it on finished. the way to Anaheim. I think it was technically yeah. it was in Yorba Linda. Yeah. I think in Harbor City for some reason or Harbor. Yeah, I don't think it went quite that far because oh, okay. I, the the police I ran into, I think, were in Yorba Linda. I assume it was. I don't even know if it was the same event. It could have been an entirely different event, <laughs> possibly on, on the same freeway, just a, you know, five miles away or something like that. But yeah, so I was like, ah, oh, geez, I should have, I should have opened that link one more time before I left the office <laughs> to see where now, it now, ended. Now you got to think to yourself, right? All these criminals probably eat lots of junk food imagine if they were carnival how much more clarity they would have and they probably wouldn't even get caught that outsmart the police well they probably wouldn't do these crazy things because they probably feel better and be healthier right possibly yeah of course they would be better at it that's not good for me then no it's not (laughs) (laughs) your your biggest form of entertainment goes right out the window well, we all have to make sacrifices, Joe, for a better world. So there you go. So I'm going to put Joe on the spot. Joe, uh, how how much do you think your sort of obsession with the police chases is related to your Aspie-like condition? Oh, 100%. I'll pull over. If I, if I get a notification while I'm driving, I'll pull over and watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you think that if you weren't on the spectrum, you probably wouldn't be quite as enamored by it, right? Uh, definitely not. Yeah. So when we were having the riots a couple years ago, were you like, were you more scared for us? Or was it like, oh, wow, this is great. Or is it more police chases? Because I know you also really like law enforcement. Right? I do. I do. Um, I wasn't scared for you guys because, I mean, Tom lives in, in, in Riverside County. So all the trouble was happening in, LA County. Um, so I, I don't think I was too worried about that. But I was listening to it on a, on a scanner app. So I was listening to the police radio traffic as well on the scanner radio, mm. as well as watching it on TV. So that, that, was, that was pretty cool. Did you see, I remember when me and Tom were watching like down in downtown LA how they had the blockade or whatever and those guys mm-hmm. with cars that would just roll as close as they could to it and then do like a donut or something and roll back. Do you remember that, Tom? Was it kind of like a street takeover situation? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I do remember that. It's crazy how that happens. And it's like, I, I kind of get it. The excitement of, you know, fast cars and doing stunts and smoking tires, but yeah, it's completely out of control. And of course, we kept driving past the Sixth Street Bridge, downtown LA. Right? They <laughs> built this great big bridge that kind of goes through the city there, and it's all nicely lit. And all it does is attract people who want to do stunts and idiots you know, driving too fast and climbing up over the bridge and stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like you yeah, can't... But the, the, yeah. But there was there was that when they when they opened it up, I think that week. They had to close it again because people were going crazy doing donuts on on the bridge. They they were um they had a guy if you look it up, he put a barber barber chair in, in the middle of the um in the middle of the the bridge and started cutting someone's hair as traffic was going either way. 
look it up. You'll find, you'll see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, every time. And then you wonder why I have a fascination with the place. I, I was driving. It's entertainment. I was driving by there uh, when uh, some friends were out visiting more recently, and I don't think it was open. I didn't see any cars on it. You know, I think they just closed it off because it's such an attraction. We so, saw it coming back from the Dodgers game. Mm. We, we we're pretty close to it. Mm-hmm. We and we never got. I never got to drive over it. Yeah, next time. Next time we'll we'll drive over it, and you can do some stunts. <laughs> you can get out yeah. in the middle and start making some pastries or something. <laughs> we'll just have far a barbecue. Up. We'll just start cutting. I was gonna yeah, say far yeah, up barbecue. A barbecue yeah. in the middle of the bridge. Yeah. There's meat sticks. <laughs> just eat some, grilling some meat sticks out there. Mm-hmm. Meat sticks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And and tomato sauce. Oh, I had this yeah. idea. Okay, the meat mosaic should adopt a freeway. So we have one of those like <laughs> freeway signs. All right, we'll something. look into that. Are sponsored getting... by our cleanup crew, sponsored by the meat mosaic. Do they have that in Missouri? They do have those. Uh-huh. I mean, they have those signs like they do in California. All right, so let's look into that. Yeah, yeah. we could sponsor a highway. There you go. Adopt a highway program. And there's a local gas station that wants you to subscribe to their YouTube, which I find very interesting. <laughs> what? Say that again? A gas station? <laughs> yeah. A re- very local has a sign that says subscribe to our YouTube. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Did you look to see what they were posting? No, I haven't yet. I need to remember. I think that it's like free ride gas station or something. I don't know. Or convenience store. I don't know. Yeah. But I just thought that was really funny. I was like, that's gas station with a YouTube channel. Who knew? Yeah. I mean, tons of entertainment happen at the gas station or the convenience oh. stores. So, I mean, if they're just streaming the security footage, then yeah, they're going to make a mint. I just don't know if that's legal. <laughs> so, what, what sort of uh, antics do you think they're seeing at that gas station? Oh, who knows? I mean, speculate. Could be a lot. It could you be a live webcam. Yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Yeah, somebody driving off with a nozzle still in their car and filling up an electric car. There you go. Yeah. The Tesla pulls up. And they can't figure out where the gas cap is. <laughs> it's all good stuff, right? You'd be concerned if they had an OnlyFans account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find out that cameras are in the bathroom or something. Someone yeah. wigging out over uh, there are not enough gummy worms. I don't know. There you go. Or a Slurpee or whatever it's called. Uh, every time somebody mentions Slurpee, I've, I uh, I get a little sad because they took a poo out of The Simpsons. Oh, uh, yeah. Very sad. It was a great character. Well, this is the only one with good morals and work ethic, too. <laughs> so maybe Lisa, right? Uh, well, yeah. Lisa did go through that vegetarian streak, so I don't know. Yeah, so this is points. She learned. Mm. I hear she only eats pork chops now. So, oh, yeah. so, um, uh, do you got any uh, obsessions like uh, Joe does that you kind of attribute to your aspiness, your tism? I'm really not sure. I think it kind of hops around. Mm. I guess I don't can't really think of my current obsession, mm. but like I don't know, I'm I'm way more of I guess in the moment kind of person. Can't really think of anything at the moment. Well, what have been the past ones? To give video games, oh, or something? like anime, video games. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z for sure. Uh, music. Yeah, getting stuck on the same album for like a month straight, listening oh, to yeah. it over and over and over again. What albums yeah. have you been stuck on? Um. Okay, so Slipknot, Iowa, probably some mm-hmm. Corn albums. Mm-hmm. Um, Metallica. I don't know. Probably like all the albums I own. I've probably been stuck on it for like a while. Or like I'll cycle through and I'll be like really into Nirvana. For like a month so i'll just listen to like nothing but like nirvana for a while or like velvet revolver or primus i don't know it's kind of a little bit more like a band sometimes too just kind of like really into that music for like a month or something 
<laughs> yeah, I got stuck on um I don't know, just popped into my head and I had to listen to it for like two weeks straight, like I don't know how many times a day. It's an old album from like the late nineties. It's called um the band's called God Lives Underwater. Mm-hmm. And the one out this probably their second album is called the so called Space Age. And mm-hmm. uh just that I can't stop listening to it sometimes. Like I wake up mm-hmm. thinking about it. You know, I'm driving down the the, the street, the highway, and then I'm like, oh, I gotta hear that. You know, so that that was one of my more recent ones for sure. So yeah, I do that. How about Joe? Besides George Michael, who do you get obsessed with listening to? Uh, I like all types of music. I I, I like putting playlists together. Mm. Um, I I recently put a playlist together of '90s euro dance music mm. nice. and um yeah so it's about uh almost 90 hours worth of music oh wow <laughs> 90 yeah. hours yeah so it's, it's over a thousand so it's about 1100 songs so yeah i mean i i go to extremes when it comes to things I, like you know so how um, many uh playlists do you think you've made well i made one for valentine's day and that goes that's about for yourself lobster. Or no, 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 I did it. I did it for work, just for fun. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that that's about eight hours long. Then I did another one, which is just old eighties, nineties music, which is about uh, fifteen hours long. So yeah. So that's the, yeah. That, that that's pretty much it. All right, guys, since we have this in common, how many Rammstein songs are in your playlists? Well, I, I think I've just, on Spotify, I've just liked the albums. Mm. Yeah, you can so, listen to a whole Rammstein album easy over and over again. So yeah. let me bring you to a question. Hmm. Are you able to skip through an album? Hmm like skip songs or do you feel like you have to listen to it like first song to last song joe you want to take that one first uh i will listen to first song to last song yeah me too typically it took me a long time like what what am i you called pet peeves do you guys have pet peeves that word in australia that saying we do yeah so one of my pet peeves is that when you're in the car with somebody and they won't like they keep changing the station like mid song <laughs> or yeah, something that, 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 that drives that me com- yeah, completely yeah, bonkers. Like even if I don't like the song, it's just like please just leave the dial alone for like a song or two. I get if it's a commercial, but like yeah, that just that drives me kind of really crazy. Yeah, but it, you know you said that you go that you had a um. You have stints there where you listen to an album for a whole month. Mm. I will listen to a song, <laughs> one song, on repeat for many weeks. Mm. Yeah. What was what was the last song you remember doing that to? I was an old nineties. Um, oh no, hang on, what was it? And it might have been a Richard Marx song. Mm. Yeah, you just went yeah. and saw him recently, right? I did. I did. So have I disappeared off the screen? No. Nope. No, you're here. No, okay. you're still here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was a. It was a. I went and did. I went and saw him in concert. He is fifty nine years old, and he sounds exactly the same as when he was performing in the eighties. Hmm. Like unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, just I think, fantastic. Um, fantastic. Till what's his name? Till Lindman or something like that. Yeah. The lead singer from Romstein. He's like sixty. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't know by watching him perform. That's for sure. Yeah, but they're just so talented. You know, um, one thing I did learn, I'm a little bit disappointed about, is that Richard Marx is vegan. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he probably won't last long. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I was a bit uh, okay. Fair enough, whatever. Well, and uh, how old is Robert Smith now? 
Oh, he'd be in his 60s, 61, 62. I, maybe more than that, right? I don't know. No, no, no. He'd been, he'd been his, in, and Robert Smith, for anyone that doesn't know, he's the lead singer of The Cure. Mm -hmm. The Cure. The Cure. How do you guys say The Cure. The Cure. The Cure. The Cure. Who are currently doing a tour of North America. And if you can get tickets, good luck. Yeah, wow. right. When I looked that night, they were they started at five hundred seventy nine dollars. It's like U, uh, U, U, U.S. dollars. You know? Yeah, U.S. dollars. No, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Oh no, you won't get tickets. No, nah, I mean I was gonna look up his age. Oh okay. <laughs> but yeah, but I yeah, mean, I mean celebrities being vegan, right? That's a big like. Ooh, yes. So he's cool sixty three years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So Joe was really close. Yeah. 61, 62. I said, yes. Yeah. Simon Gallup is 62. So, yeah. So they're up there. But yeah, it'd be good to go see them. I mean, uh, that'd be pretty amazing to see him play. So, but, but not at that price. Yeah. Not that price. And, uh, you know, there he's been, Robert Smith is in the news because he thought, um, Ticketmaster or somebody who was selling yeah. tickets was charging too many fees or something or was yeah. it exceeded what was in the contract or something like that. So that was they blasted nice. them. Yeah. But you know, the tickets are still <laughs> hundreds of dollars. So you know. And, and you know what though? Like I, I did I did make the comment to you. You I said, look, it'd be a, be a once in a lifetime opportunity to go see them in you know, it was the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. And you said, you know, $500 a ticket. And I said, yeah, look, I, I remember paying $500 a ticket when George Michael was here. Mm. But then I thought about it, but that's $500 US, mm -hmm. which is probably closer to like $800 Australian. It's mm. a lot of money. I'd, yeah. still that. I'd, still, I'd still spend it though. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose I do it for one time just to see them because you know they're in their sixties. I don't know. It, it will when we get a chance to see them again, especially in North America. You know, because they're a UK band for people who don't know. So they yeah. they probably I don't know where they live or they, not that they all all the members live in the same place, but um, you know they probably live in the UK. So they're probably gonna tour more in Europe than here. So. Oh, well. Speaking of which, pretty disappointing that Ozzy Osbourne gave said he quit LA and moved back to the UK. Oh pretty, yeah, pretty not happy about that. No, yeah, no. really. No. Well, because Ozzy Osbourne tickets weren't really that expensive because he lived in LA, so uh, like he would host festivals and stuff. Mm, Ozfest, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, his um his health's a bit crap at the moment, isn't it? I haven't uh, gotten any recent updates, but he's usually kind of struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how old is he now? Oh, he'd be, oh he's got to be, be in his sixties. Seventy four. No. Oh, he's seventy four. Oh wow. Yeah. Hey, he's, he's that he's, old. He was uh he was already a huge star before I think before the cure came along. You know. It's got 10 years, oh, yeah. 12 years. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, you yeah, know, look at the amount of drugs that guy's taken. Wow. It's, the it's, amount of it's, bats it's, that guy's eaten. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's surprising that he's, he's lasted this long, personally, anyway. It's, mm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, should we go into that article next? Sure. So, Joe, uh, well, how's the endurance running going? Uh, for those that don't know, Joe, I always call him a semi-professional endurance cyclist. Nah. Uh, uh, <laughs> just because the loop. level you do it at is, I think, is higher than a hobbyist. So don't know exactly where to put you. He's definitely hardcore and uh, super competitive, right? Right, yeah. So, so I've actually stopped cycling and started running. Right. Yeah. Um, so today I, I went for a 10 mile run this morning. Wow. Yeah. So, 
So yeah, just gearing up for a half marathon that I'll will be doing in ten weeks from now. Ten nice. nine weeks, whatever it is. Countdown. So there it's like uh, yeah, thir so I, thirteen I, miles. Uh, twenty one k's. So yeah, thirty miles, something like that. Um, so it's going to be a, a, a you know, it. These are all little stepping stones to get to. I want to do a I want I want to do a full marathon eventually. Mm -hmm. Um and I think it's achievable because with cycling there's so much you have to invest so much of your time to to get good. With this running you have to invest a lot of time, but it's nowhere near as much as cycling. Hmm. Yeah, and and what about equipment, right? I mean well, you, that's another you don't exactly together. ride inexpensive bicycles, do you? Well, yeah. I mean, a, a bicycle can cost, you know, a good one from fifteen up to twenty five thousand Australian dollars. Yeah. So they're quite expensive. You know, I, I bought a pair of carbon plated running shoes the other day. I haven't used them, and they were three hundred and eighty dollars. So they're two fifty US. Mm hmm. And how long do you think a pair of shoes like that lasts? Uh, I think I've read between two to three hundred miles. That's it. But they're not. The, it's not a daily trainer. You don't use them all the time. You use them for race days or for specific workouts. You know that leading up to a um to a race. Yeah, so let's dive into your obsession with shoes. You're a Imelda Marcos gene there. So you you like the sort of um, stylish sneakers, and you no. also are into the exotic running shoes, right? Exotic running shoes. I just like good shoes. You know, um, I have 30 pairs of Jordans. 30 pairs of Jordans. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Um honey, how many pairs of shoes do you have? You think total? Shoes? How many shoes? Yeah, counting at your, your brother's garage. Not including Here. thongs, huh? Flip flops. Nine yeah. Shoes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Three pairs. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Just do an inventory. Uh, Stop take. Yeah, I guess. Ten. Uh -huh. So you have more Jordans than my wife has of shoes, like just shoes. I, I mind just, you, just for I'm, context. I don't wear the Jordans either. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't wear like any of those shoes. She just listed either. Um. So yeah, look, I, I I've tried because I'm new to running. Um. I've tried a few different pairs of shoes, and I think the two pairs that work for me are the ultra which are a zero drop and the other one is the hoka shoes they work for me they're, they're a five mil drop i tried the asics or asex and asics. ended up asics ended up with the calf strain mm -hmm. so because the the it's like an eight eight or nine mil drop good shoes good shoes to run in but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I, I don't think I, I didn't like the drop. A bit too aggressive for me. So, mm. what what's the drop mean? What is that in reference to? So, just think of your foot. Or is it like that? Okay, so mm. in a pair of ultras, there's zero drop. So from heel to toe, there is is a zero drop. And then you get a pair of hokers, and then you might have a five mil drop. So five mil. So you're five mil higher at the heel than you are at the toe. Now is that five millimeters that you're saying? Five mil five millimeters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we have a different so, mil means something different in the US, believe it or not. No, not MILF. Mil. Mil. No, <laughs> mil. Oh, just mil. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, MILF means something yeah. MILF means something else, but that's universal. So that's universal language. <laughs> um yeah millimeter so so that's what it is so it just makes it more aggressive um yeah 
it just loads up different parts of of the um of the legs as well, calves, glutes, uh, hamstrings, I should say. But yeah, I just found that when I was running in the Asics, the Nova Blast, which is meant to be like one of the top shoes out there, it just I, again it was nice to run in when I wasn't injured, but I was just getting too many nigglies, so pulled the pin on them. Nigglies, yeah, yeah. little That's issues, neat. issues. Neagly, we got to add that to the vocabulary. <laughs> Neagly's issues. All right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, so so they're they're the two brands I like running in. Hoka and I think Ultra is my favorite. It's a zero drop. It's more naturally. It just makes your it just corrects your feet and your running style as well. I tried to find a pair of Ultras to wear and I couldn't couldn't get any to fit. Of course, I never find any shoes that fit. So. Well, you know what? They they actually make three different widths. They make a slim, a standard, and the original. The original's really wide. Yeah, so I was bugging Zach Bitter. I was like, dude, uh, and he told he knew exactly the volume of the shoe and the width and everything. And it's I went by them. Yeah, so he, yeah, it's sponsored by him, so he knows all about them. And I went and tried them on, but they're just they're not tall enough. I'm not really wide mm-hmm. enough for my feet. <laughs> so I was I was looking at shoes that were the only ones my foot fit in were way too long. So one of them, you know, but I couldn't find any sh- I couldn't find any brand of shoe like that that fit. So that's why I still wear those the five what size foot what size foot are you? Well the you know the length isn't that long. It's like twelve or something. Twelve in twelve so American size twelve. Yeah, American sizes, yeah. That's what we run off. What about you, Justin? Yeah, so mine's a 10. 10 typically. Got a big foot. So so I you, you guys have seen how tall I am. Mm. How short I am. I'm a size 12 US. Yeah. So and you're a little bit taller than Justin, was it? I think. I think yeah, we did so. measure, and I was taller than Justin. Justin Just said, I'm 180. Yeah. I'm 180. Yeah, 180. Then I stood next to him, I was taller mm. than him. <laughs> but uh i've got really wide thick feet so that's that's why i run into an issue i'm always buying shoes that are bigger than 12s i mean that the I, I mostly wear moccasins around you know they're kind of they're fairly well known here in the states they're they're from minnesota and they're flat you know they have they're basically a zero drop shoe and i, I get their extra wide like 13s or something like that to get enough room so and they still the first couple of days i wear them there's just they're tight over the top you know so you gotta wear them in yeah after i wear them in they're fine because they're leather you know mm-hmm. and then i'll wear those the uh the classic five finger because it's open on top right so where my foot's really thick it's just the shoes open there so Otherwise, or go or walk around barefoot. So, what what was this article that I know Justin sent an article on? I, I've been a little bit slack this week. I've been very busy with work and other other commitments. So, what what was this article you're talking about, Justin? Yeah. So basically, the article alludes that, and I could probably pull it up if you guys give me a minute. I'm pulling it up. Oh, okay. Can you see it? Yeah. So the uh, it's endurance exercise tied to more coronary atherosclerosis. Uh, it was published on March tenth. Let's uh, take this... a minute. Let's take a minute on that. Who here can pr- properly pronounce atherosclerosis? <laughs> that that's like the, one of the worst <laughs> words to try and say, isn't it? It definitely yeah. is. And what is atherosclerosis? Isn't a plaque buildup? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's plaque, plaque in the arteries, the kind of thing we associate with heart attacks or infarctions. Right. So go on, Justin. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. So in- essentially, if you read through the article, what it alludes is that they found some quote unquote evidence of people that did endurance 
more or less endurance, which they classified endurance as more than three hours a week um, of uh, jogging speed, basically, um, that seem to increase their risk of atherosclerosis uh, through seeing more plaque in the heart of these people, basically. Um, By heart, you mean arteries. Arteries, yeah, in their arteries. Um, uh, but it doesn't really. So even in the this paper, uh, the uh, doctor or whatever was like, you know, we can't. At least he was being fair in that he can't. He's like, we can't really determine. He's like, I don't want people to be scared of exercising. He's like, overall, we still have an issue of under exercise rather than over exercise. But this is found to have more, uh, again, plaque flowing through arteries uh, in uh, endurance athletes or those that uh, participate in endurance exor type exercise for more than three hours a week. Um, now, so... was the plaque flowing through the arteries or sticking in the arteries? That was the issue. Well, I think it was like sticking in the arteries. Yeah. 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 No, that's all. That's all great, but does it mention anywhere in this study? Well, it that... says right here, regardless of plaque type, whether it was calcified, mixed, or non-calcified. Yeah, it does say so that. So just just general plaque flowing through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, I was going to ask the question: Does it mention anywhere in the study about the person's diet? No, it does. Of course not. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I, 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 I think. I think that would play a big role in it. Well, and yeah, that's kind that. of everything, right? Yeah, and and typically, people that are endurance athletes do like to consume a bit of carbs, mm. right? Or a lot. Got to carb load. Or a lot. Yeah. Got to have that spaghetti and sure. meatballs, or carb spaghetti, loading. meatball, and sub. Yeah, carb like loading. I used to do. The day before, and, and then sucking down a bunch of goo. What, what do they call it in Australia? That, that, uh, the goo, the gel. Yeah, they call it the same brand there. Yeah. 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 yeah goo. It's, it's a brand. G U. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot to take away from that. You know, um, three hours. Uh, look, I, I think intensity. What's the intensity of the person's doing it? at you know um how often are they doing it every week are they doing it you know every, every couple of weeks they're doing that, that run what diet are they consuming as well it's a well a few it, things look oh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead finish so i think that's quite important because i, I know tom's had a, a scan done and what was it one to zero one because like it, oh it's like one to five thousand and then mine was a six, I think. Which is nothing. Basically. Yeah, it's pretty minor. You know, a lot so, of a lot of people uh of course that was sort of the beginning. So um, but a lot of people my age, well, you know, like Ray, wasn't Ray like six hundred or something? Yeah, six hundred was like Ray, Ray's really high. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I he's not here, but I haven't talked to him in a while, but Buffalo Joe, wasn't he like fifteen hundred or something? I think it was over yeah. a thousand for sure. But then like Sean, he was zero. A lot of yeah. A lot of people in the carnivore circles we had it done, they have no a zero score. And then we're talking about the uh, coronary artery calcium score. So that's usually like a CAT scan or an MRI of the arteries and they go in and they can see the plaque. So the, um and they score the the plaque buildup basically in the arteries. So just so people know what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. And I think Sean may exercise more than three hours a week. Just taking a guess. I would think so. Um, given all that, you know, I don't never heard him say exactly how much, how many hours a week. And he, I, I doubt that, you know, I don't know how many hours a week I exercise either because I don't I never add it up, right? I right. just go do it and I do what I'm doing and then it's done, it's done, you know. And and people do ask me about that because like, well, how much time are you putting into it? Cause I get it, you know, managing managing the time making the time for it, you know, that's 
that's an issue, you know, and um, I mean, you know, like I reference uh, Allie Q-Dub. She's a pro bodybuilder that I know from mm -hmm. the gym. And she <clears throat> she said she generally doesn't work out more than 45 minutes a day, you know, and it's mostly lifting. I'm sure she does. I know she does some cardio too because she, she posts stuff like that. She posts pictures of, I think she's got a step master and a, and uh treadmills everything at home so she does some cardio i'm sure especially when she's leaning out for a competition but um when you're lifting you know you're it's hard to judge intensity because like she's a bodybuilder so if she's doing the hypertrophy training and she's doing a smaller muscle group it doesn't really get your heart rate up quite as high you know your body's not working quite as hard because you're working on smaller muscle groups but then you turn around and do deadlifts or something and that's like everything you got, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, your heart's thumping, you're, you're, you're uh, in the tank. Yeah. So, so I, you know, it's not the same as you running balls out, you know, but I know Zach bitter. I always reference him cause he's the, the runner I know the most about, but he said, you know, he's an ultra marathon. All right. So it's like the guy will do races that are, you know, it's 24 hours of running or something insane or I'll run over a hundred miles, you know, just like, holy crap. And he's like, yeah, you definitely don't want to do this for your health. <laughs> you know, it's not a healthy thing. Right. Mm. So. But yeah, I've, uh, actually heard, I've actually heard people say that, you know, running takes years off your life. Hmm? Yeah, well, why don't runners last live longer than everyone else? You know, it's the same question. Why don't doctors live longer? Why don't nutritionists live longer? Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, why don't vegans live longer? Well, we know why vegans don't live longer. <laughs> Are you playing with your uh, rat tattoo or something? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready to eat. Is that a? I hope, special... I hope Disney doesn't is sue a, us. Is that a special effect, or is that a little doll you're playing with? It's a little doll that Sarah has. Yeah, yeah. Justin's okay. version of Yellow Ted. <laughs> what the hell? A like minion. <laughs> All right. Thank you, honey. Very, very oh, helpful. the honey's in on it. I see. Uh huh. It's starting to make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about eating carnivore um, and, w and what, why we think it's different when you just eat meat in relation to atherosclerosis. I mean, what do you guys, what, what do you think's going on? What, what do you think's actually happening in the artery that causes it to block? Well, I mean, it seems to be that when you get the uh, metabolic dysfunction uh, due to eating uh, carbohydrates, uh, insulin spikes, what have you, um, as well as the issue with the Randall cycle, combining fats and uh, carbohydrates in the body, leading to inflammation in the body, you get an inflamed heart, plus you get the particles getting kind of warped and sticky and cholesterol is like the a body's anti-inflammatory. So you have an, a heart that's being inflamed daily or parts of the body being inflamed daily. Cholesterol going to those areas, those lipid particles that get measured, um, carrying with it cholesterol. Cholesterol is kind of sticky. The wall is kind of sticky and warped. And so they you end up with this kind of velcro situation in your heart valves and arteries and yeah then you get the then then they find the plaque right after the mitochondria no not might ah infarction there you go myocardial infarction okay mitochondrial infarction <laughs> yeah <laughs> myocardial because i always want to say mitochondria infarction <laughs> which i suppose is also true um <laughs> they get myo myocard myocardial infarction yeah it's another impossible word right well, joe what do you think is going on 
it, whatever Justin said. <laughs> yeah, he summed it up nicely. Well, yeah, yeah I think... he, he did. He did. Uh, you know, but to make it triglycerides, you know, uh, 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 are the issue, mm. which is yeah. you know, the Rand Randall cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, triglycerides are combination of uh, fats and sugars, right, that accumulate in the blood, right? So, you know, back to the Randall cycle, kind of what's going on is once the the cells have as much as they are designed to have as far as fuel goes, whether it be sugar or fat, then they, they stop absorbing it. And so it builds up in the bloodstream, right? So the, the fats and carbohydrates are glucose and fatty acid chains are circulating in the blood and the cells are like, Oh, we're full. And they, they close the door. Right. And then it backs up in the blood. And that's one of the things that we, you see when you look at like a hemoglobin A1C score is mm -hmm. they look at how much the glucose has damaged the red blood cells. Right. So they, they're sort of uh, the sacrificial lamb as it were. So the, the excess sugar in the blood glycates the red blood cells. And that's what they're counting when they do an a A1C score. So if you have a elevated A1C score for a long period of time, that generally indicates that you've been suffering from high blood sugar, right? And then um, the endothelium or the, the cells inside the arteries, same thing. The the glycation happens to them then you get inflammation and it seems like particularly on the left side the left descending artery it's a high pressure side of the the heart you know it's where the blood's being pushed out as opposed to being pulled in seems to be one of the primary places that atherosclerosis builds up the plaque builds up and then over time the body covers it with calcium in order to stabilize it because the plaque is a squishy material right it can break loose and float through the body and cause a, a blockage, right? Aneurysm. A stroke. Yeah, an aneurysm, a, a stroke in the brain, a pulmonary embolism, um, deep tissue thrombosis, stuff like that happens when the when that goo is flowing around, right? So um, it seems like the old model was that, oh, you've got, you eat animal fat, the fat's in your blood, and then it sticks there, Right. But really what we know now is that there's an injury there. There's a sore spot, right? So the body tries to bandage over it. Somehow the 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 lining of the artery is lined with the um, glycocalyx, which is like a, a really slippery hair-like structures, right? That helps the fluid flow through freely, right? It's been yeah, apparently, you know, a lot of fish have the same sort of coating out on the outside to make them really slippery. And then it seems as though something and in and, and the, the those large arteries actually have their own blood supply, right? So they're they're actually quite quite thick and they have their blood supply supplied to them from the exterior rather than the blood flowing through them. And somehow you wind up with inflammation there. And that inflammation um attracts a bandage, a repair mechanism, an autoimmune reaction that uh, accumulates the the atherosclerosis or the plaque to it to bandage it over, right? And so this old model of it's just, you know, animal fat or saturated fat flowing through your blood and just sticking there and clogging things up doesn't really make any sense, right? And there seems to be, a, well, we, we've, we've known that there's certain foods and habits that um, do encourage the accumulation of those plaques there. Right. But it, now we see, you know, people go on a animal based diet where they're just eating basically mostly muscle meat and an associated animal fat. Right. And we don't see the, we see a reduction of inflammation throughout the body and we don't see people uh, with high triglycerides. We don't see people with low HDLs as much. Sometimes the overall cholesterol goes up a little bit. And of course, people like Joe, who are avid runners, you know, they have this whole class of people called um, lean mass hyper responders. Yeah. So 
those people have higher levels of LDL, but that's because the body is making LDL to deliver fatty acids. So they, the body makes the LDL, it loads it up with the fatty acids, the fatty acids flow through the bloodstream to deliver those fatty acids as energy to the cells in the body. And then when they drop off their payload, they become regular LDL again, right? So the LDL counts are high. And even though in the past it's been associated with heart disease, this normal function doesn't seem to create any heart disease, right? So there's this thing of, oh, it's high cholesterol. And then you learn, well, what's what are they talking about? They're talking about LDL and HDL, and they're not actually cholesterol. They're proteins that transport or clean up uh, the, the, the cholesterol in the body. And of course, we find out cholesterol is one of the most important substances in the body, right? It's it's a component of tissues all over your body. It's very vital, right? So then they, you know, they come out with all these statins to push down the levels of cholesterol. And then there's always these side effects, right? And it's like, well, it, it when you look at it statistically, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that these statins do any good unless you or somebody's already had a heart attack, right? Tom, can I ask you a question? Sorry, can I ask you a question? So when they give you a statin, that is to slow down the LDL cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Well, All right. no, well, it's, it's the production of actual cholesterol. The cholesterol, yeah. The cholesterol substance, not the LDL. Yeah. Okay, the, the, uh, the issue is not the LDL, it's the, it's the, it's the triglycerides, the fat in the blood. Well, the, yeah, I would agree that that's, that's a bigger issue. High triglycerides is... Um, seems to be more detrimental than high LDL or high total or high actual cholesterol. Cholesterol is a fatty, a fatty substance that has to be transported by proteins because being that it's fatty, it doesn't move through the blood very well because, you know, our blood is mostly like a salt water solution. Right. And so, you know, you, you see fat floating in dishwater, you, you know, it tends to clump up. Right. So, so, which is yeah. what people think our blood looks like, by the way, with What's fat that? sitting in dishwater. There you go. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. people think our blood looks like. So, does a statin actually? Um, it suppresses them? the production of cholesterol. Yeah, but what about does it do anything to the L to the triglycerides? Sorry, that's that's the question I'm asking. Yeah, I think it, I think it, uh, I don't know, to be honest with you, the triglycerides. Or is it only, or is it only, yeah, or is it only just there to, to, by the way, um, combat the, the effects of, um, high LDL? Because if that's the case, that's, that's, that's pretty bad, isn't it? I mean, you shouldn't take it anyway, but. Well, and you got to ask yourself, you know, so when we look at cholesterol, you know, they do a blood panel and they, they look at the amount of actual cholesterol, not the LDL or the HDL or triglycerides. Um, and they say, oh, it's too high. Most of that cholesterol was made by your body. Only, I don't know, it's something like 16% sure. of it or something like that comes from your diet, right? So why is your body making that extra cholesterol? That's, That's the say. real question, right? So here yes. I, I goggled or Googled, uh, do statins lower triglycerides? And it says statins decrease the body's production of cholesterol. Uh, now, a big note here, most of cholesterol uh, we don't get from animals. Most is like a genetic, how much cholesterol we produce. So I do want to make that point too. Um, and, in, and increases removal of cholesterol by the level lev, uh, by the liver so they reduce ldl cholesterol levels by as much as 25 to 55 percent in addition they can lower triglycerides statins may also reduce inflammation and may prevent heart attacks and strokes through this mechanism um which it seems to be if you talk to someone like bart k the reason why statins work actually has nothing to do with the cholesterol part of it or triglycerides part of it, but has more to do with the lowering of inflammation in the body um, seems to be what actually helps in preventing uh, the next heart attack. And uh, it seems as though that could also be accomplished through taking a low dose aspirin, um, which for a long time, 
uh, a Bayer, right? There's the Bayer commercials of, of they sell the low dose aspirin for people to take every morning to lower body and the inflammation to help prevent a heart attack that morning, essentially, or the next morning, something like that. I forget the half life of aspirin, but yeah. So, yeah. so, so LDL cholesterol also transports mm -hmm. triglycerides and also HDL throughout the body, correct? Yeah, so the LDL, and H, and LDLs H uh, transporting the fatty acid chains and f other fuels through the body and delivering them, and then the HDL comes back and cleans up the excess cholesterol. So by lowering the LDL cholesterol or slowing it down, if you want to look at it, you're also slowing down the effects of the HDL cholesterol as well. Mm, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, it's lowering all cholesterol. So um, I don't, you don't you want your HDL, the, but, 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 but you know, it doesn't your HDL yeah. cholesterol repair the body. So by lowering well, that, and, it, and, and again, it's, it's, H, not, it's not a good thing. HDL and LDL are not actually cholesterol. Right. They're on the cholesterol panel, but they're not cholesterol. So they're proteins. They're the lipids that it's like the car and the cholesterol would be like the people inside the car. They're the protein transports people. for the lipids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it causes okay. havoc in the body nonetheless. You really and then, and then if you, your body's ability to produce <laughs> cholesterol, it's just a bad idea. Yeah. You, it, the question is why is the body producing so much cholesterol if it is really high? Right. That's the question. Why is there inflammation? You know, why do your joints hurt? You know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, what, I mean, there's all kinds of, inflammatory responses from a stuffy nose to you, you, asthma to yeah. you know painful joints or swollen fingers or you know and so why is that going on right and it's like anything it's like uh if you take the aspirin and you feel better your headache goes away or whatever your chest pain stops it's, it wasn't because you had were deficient in aspirin right yeah. Your, your cholesterol is not high because you're deficient in statins, right? They're, they're a partial remedy at best for the thing that's, that's actually going wrong, right? Well, you know, it's this whole root cause healing thing, right? Joe froze. Okay, sorry, Joe. Um, yeah, it's this whole root cause healing thing, right? Where like allopathic medicine is more yeah, symptom it. reduction, symptom addressing versus actually healing the core issue, causing X problem or whatever. Yeah, and I get that question fairly recently or fairly frequently now is because like, you know, I'm 52, you know, I know people are my age, a little older, a little younger. And they're like, yeah, why well, does a doctor put me on a statin? Well, you know, well, how do you get away with eating meat every day, <laughs> every day, you know, not just a little, you know, I mean, I eat shrimp almost every day and it's like high, very high in cholesterol. So you think, you know, you're like, how do you get away with it? And I'm like, I think it's because I don't eat the other foods and I, you know, I exercise every day. So so, uh, you know, I think that's it, you know, appropriate exercise and, um, eating foods that don't cause inflammation, foods that don't glycate, you know, your red blood cells and your endothelium, right. Foods that properly fuel your mitochondria in the cellular level. Cause there's studies that show that the human heart actually runs best on animal fat as a fuel, right? Yeah. It's hard, repeatable science, which is, you know, seems contradictory since animal fat is supposedly the thing that causes heart attacks, right? Well, and, you know, this is all goes back to Ansel Keys, right? You know? Yeah. And then I mean, we end up with the uh, seed oil epidemic that we have now. Right.
Right. Yeah. And I, I, I've, I'm even people that aren't doing nutritional podcasts. I hear them talking about like canola oil, you know, rapeseed oil. They, uh, they're like, Oh yeah, that was a thing. That was a healthy thing. Healthiest choice for a long time. Now they're, they're saying it's bad for you, you know? And of course we had all the hydrogenated vegetable oils that were supposedly better than butter, or animal fat. And now they're, they're pulling them off the market because the evidence is clear that they were, they were causing the very disease that they were supposed to help prevent, right? Right. And, well, and they're others. highly inflammatory to the body. Yeah. So. And obviously weren't really lowering cholesterol because all these people still have all this cholesterol and they're still prescribing statins left and right. So, yeah, what an interesting time. But, hey, I grew up on margarine, <laughs> the oh, imperial yeah. margarine, right? Yeah, and the... Is it Cozy Shack or whatever? What's the one in the big brown tub, big tan colored tub? I don't remember. I mean, I have that around my house. <laughs> I remember yeah. Imperial. Um, there's another one I remember with some girl on it or something. I don't remember. Yeah. And I always thought it was butter because you called it butter, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, grab the butter. Like, no one told me it was margarine or there was any difference growing up. Not until like, became way older like as an adult that i was like what this isn't butter <laughs> you were calling it butter the whole time right yeah i remember when i was a kid i was over at my cousin's house and she's like oh let's make some popcorn you know and i'm like oh cool and she gets out a box of lard and i'm like what what is that it's pig fat I was like what there was no lard in my house you know and she was popping popcorn in, and i was like Oh, this is groovy, you know, but, and then, you know, it's like that stuff was so far removed from us, you know, when we were kids, you know, it's like you drink, you know, 2% milk and ate margarine, you know, and then all the crazy cereals and bread and I can't believe butter it's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter. There you go. But it's funny because it's like, well, then what is it? Right. Like you never never made that connection in my head it's like wait i can't believe it's not butter I, I just honestly thought it was butter still even though the whole stick was mm. i can't believe it's not butter and oh like i know what spray that's... bottle thing i know that that stuff's called it's called country crock oh uh, yeah that's the one country crock yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's what the a one. bunch of crock it's a crock <laughs> crock all right yeah it's a crock of uh, hydrogenated vegetable oil yeah, but it had like the, the advertisement of like a farm, right? Like a little yeah, yeah, it had like a farmhouse or a cabin or something on it. Yeah, yeah, like that stuff is so far removed from the farm. It's not even. Well, I guess still like you know grabbing up all that rapeseed. I suppose it's some farm. Yeah, or corn oil or whatever the hell it's made out of. Yeah, and then what's sad is if you go buy lard, lard, lard from like a local store, it typically has like some kind of plant oil in it. You know, yeah, they so. put hydrogenated vegetable oil in it. Yeah, you know, it's like, and that was a big thing. You read reading back, like, I guess the U.S. was a major lard producer, and then when the hydrogenated vegetable oil came out, they kept adding it to it. You know, and you know, then people stopped wanting to buy it. You know, so it really hurt the export economy based on that, right? It's like, well, how are we going to get? It? And we we got the same problem with olive oil, right? Right. You know, the olive oils, you know, for it's usually comes from, you know, places like Italy and Greece and stuff like that. And same right. thing, they're mixing it with other oils, you know, with oils. vegetable oil. Yeah. There was a, a couple of years ago, there was a shortage of olive oil and they were mixing it with vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. Fact. But let me tell you guys in a restaurant, it's very rare that you'll find a re restaurant. That, uh, that or cafe or any hospitality venue that uses lard or even uh, olive oil, it's too expensive. They use uh, corn oil, um, vegetable oil, cottonseed oil. It's all this shit. Now you've been to actually Italy. I know you have family in Italy, Joe. I imagine yeah. in restaurants in Italy though they still use olive oil because it would be cheap there because it's sourced from there, right? Look, I doubt it's, it's been a while cheaper than... vegetable oil. Yeah, yeah. Vegetable oil will always be cheaper. 
Mm. And and at the end of the day, they're looking at, yeah, you know, they don't they don't care about you. They only care about their profit. Right. That's all they care about. So if they can get away with using vegetable oil, they'll use vegetable oil. You know, when when I grew up, so when I started my apprenticeship as a as a chef, mm. a deep fryer oil was was lard. We used to use lard. You'd have to scoop it out of a tin and and put it into the um into the fryer and let it melt mm -hmm. and everything used to taste fantastic over time you know it was, it was you know, very expensive compared to to um vegetable oil or cottonseed oil so people went that way um, you know, yeah i think it, some it, yeah. sometime when i was a kid um like McDonald's used to fry their fries in beef tallow. Don't they in and out do that? I don't know. I don't what think they, so. Yeah, I don't know. I heard, I heard that someone, I, I, someone, I think someone told me they, they still cook their fries in lard. I don't know. That's have a, to look that one worth up. looking into. But uh, yeah, they, they changed the vegetable oil. And part of it was the pressure because like, you know, uh, people from India and stuff, you know, that don't eat cows in particular or like, you know, they couldn't, mm -hmm. it was kind of cutting into their market, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then, of course, the whole thing comes along. Oh, well, you know, vegetable oil is supposed to be healthier for you, you know. So, in and out fries are fried in 100% sunflower oil. Okay. All right. So, mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Okay. Why For some reason, just, I thought, well, yeah. can't we just feed the sunflowers to the pigs and then fry it in lard? <laughs> fry up the bacon. I I I think I um one of the restaurants I went to, I think they were boasting that they still fry like their chicken wings and their French fries in lard. I'm trying to remember which it might be that one. Remember when we went to the prime prime cut cafe and there was a oh sauced. That place sauce. It might be them. Is that the one that we went to? Or it was the one that was right next to Prime Cut Cafe. Oh, you... Cafe. Mm -hmm. oh no, no, we we did go there. We went there with Marissa. That's one. Sauce, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they do. Yeah. And then we, and then we went to the same day. We went and had the prime rib next door. Mm. I forgot that was the same day, and Marissa was correcting me. She's like. I was like, uh, yeah, we went to Prime Cut Cafe and blah, blah. I was telling her about uh, that Last Chance Inn in Norco, how they have this amazing prime rib, you know, and it was better than Prime Cut. She said, oh, yeah, yeah, you guys went to Prime Cut after we went to Sauce that day, and then you guys went to blah, blah, blah afterwards. She remembered everything, like, it yeah, happened we, we yesterday, went, yeah. and I was there, and I forget. <laughs> we, went, we, and we went to, we went to uh, downtown Disney. Right. Um, and then from there we went to obviously we went to your work. We went to um not not scary farm. Yeah, not scary farm. It was all, all in the same day. We met your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's what happened to her. She doesn't call. I don't know what's mm. up with that. <laughs> Bitch. Just confronted me and on the ride and then disappeared again. Kids these days. Tell you, you my dad. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, there's a lot of there was a lot of drugs in that park that night. I think, because uh, dead girl tried to kiss me. So <laughs> that's right. In one of the mazes, it was the second <laughs> maze. Yeah, that, that's why I trimmed my beard. It's harder for him to get a hold of. Mm, there you go. <sighs> Safety first. Safety first. Yeah. So, so what do you guys been eating? What's your carnivore lifestyle look like these days? Chef Joe, let's start with you. What have you been gobbling? Is he frozen? Oh. Uh, strip points. No, I'm not frozen. Uh, strip points. Um, I did. I did have a ribeye on the bone. It's quite nice from Norm. He dry aged it for me. Scotch fillet. Five weeks. No, it was nice. on the bone though. So we call it a ribeye. 
Oh. Off the bone, he's called a Scotch fillet. Oh, thanks for yeah. correcting me. Yeah. So very important that, detail. I've had I've had a little bit of chicken here and there, not much. Yeah. But yeah, it's just been um revise, uh, not revise, strip loin. I just like strip loin. Yeah, I was in the store and uh, they had uh, porterhouses on sale, you know, and I almost mm -hmm. bought them. But I was looking at the New York strips and I was just like, <laughs> they had almost no bone on, on them. And I just like the texture of the New York strip more because the tenderloin is good, but it's just a little tiny tender piece of meat. And I was like, screw it. I'm just going to spend more fortune. money and get the strips, you know, and, mm. and instead of getting a stupid order house. So I'm, I'm with you, man. Strip loins all the way. What's like, the I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind ribeye, but yeah, I just strip loin for me just hits the spot. Yeah. Justin, what sort of culinary chaos is going on at your house? <laughs> um, so eggs with some ground beef and hot dog for breakfast. I don't know, it's kind of like a go-to for me. Very American. Uh, and then uh some New Yorks as well. So they had these really thick New Yorks at Costco, they're like an inch, inch and a half thick. Pretty meaty, pretty fatty, boneless, um, you know, pay, I mean, not top dollar, but, you know, you pay for that, right? Um, they're about $10 a pound, which isn't terrible. No. It's not like, you know, a bargain or anything either. Um, throw mm. those in the air fryer about nine, 10 minutes. Mm. And yeah, they're, they're good to go. Uh, the, the foodie grill or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of been been really good. Um, doing uh, hibachi, some like Chinese buffets where like they have the hibachi and like you just throw a bunch of raw meat and a bunch of shrimp, chicken if you want it. Avoid the crab because it's imitation crab. I learned that the hard way. Um, have them grill it up for you. I throw some minced garlic and onion in there just for a little bit of flavor, you know, garlic and onion. I don't eat the onion or garlic, but having it add the flavor doesn't seem to mess with me. And, you know, they usually have like some spicy crawdads to munch down on too. Mm. Um, so yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, just the occasional burger. Um, yeah, but keeping it majority carnivore at the moment. I went to In and Out today. Ah, uh, hate you. Yeah, God. Yeah. Yeah. I fueled up on some flying Dutchman. There you go. How many did you have? Uh, I only had uh, four. Four today. Mm. Wasn't Soft. super hungry, but I, I'm going to probably go back because I got to drive by there a couple more times today. So I also pull in and get some more Dutchman. I'm just saying. There you go. Just Thank don't send any photos, please. What's that? I said, just don't send me any photos. <laughs> sure thing, man. I'll make sure and send you some photos. <laughs> Actually, I should be, I, I'll go get some beef patties from Norm. Yeah, and then I'll make my I'll make my own here. Mm. But they use I, I don't know what cheese they use. I've, I've got to find that out. I see if I can get it here. Yeah. Here. At, at in and out yeah i think it's just classic american mm. cheese sliced cheese speaking of which is i bought that giant block of it when you're here justin and i haven't even opened it yet <laughs> well you, your house is quite stocked with cheese so not surprised and ribeyes now so there you go oh no the ribeyes are long gone <laughs> cheese is still here the ribeyes are gone uh, of I, course. I haven't even come close to getting through all those hot dogs yet so. <laughs> there you go on oh, your chili did you make a new batch of chili yet God. yeah and i got some more ground beef i want to make another batch so. Ooh, I can, I'm probably not next tomorrow month. morning sorry but monday morning i am going to attempt a carnivore pancake i found a very easy recipe um it's a one-to-one -one ratio of at one ounce cream cheese for one egg i guess you mix that together and it's like becomes more or less a pancake. So stay tuned. Yeah. So do that tomorrow morning and then 
tell us all about her on the live stream. Take some pictures. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be doing it tomorrow morning, but maybe yes, Monday morning. Okay, fine. Sometime. <laughs> uh, you can always fit in a egg and cream cheese into the diet. Do I have to call Sarah and tell her to make sure you make it tomorrow morning? Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> I should have gotten like some French vanilla like drops or whatever and some cinnamon. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Well, well, you guys want to wrap her up? Sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. It was a great cat's up. And that was a great cat's up. It's good seeing you, Joe. We got to do this more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's always fun. I mean, look, I, I started a new job a year ago and I now work in the mornings. So it's hard for me to, to join you guys uh, every Sunday. Your Sunday, my Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we can set up some alternate times. Good. Definitely. Yeah, I, I like doing the live stuff. The live stuff is fun. Yeah, well, right. we can we can do lives at different times. So we can do that too. So, mm. so that'll mm. be great. All right, boys. Well, let's remind everybody out there to eat some meat, feel better, better. whatever, whatever you, you do. Don't fall down. Stand the carb hole. Bye bye.